In this episode of Paint Society, we're gonna take this wrecked and flooded P1 and turn it into a show-stopping SEMA car. And we're here with Tavares, and he's got this wrecked and mangled mess, and tell me more about exactly what this is. So, if you don't know, this is my 2015 McLaren P1. It was in a Hurricane Ian giant flood, like a Category 4. It was completely underwater. There's salt water, there's debris, and I decided that not only would I rebuild the car, but I would make it custom. And this is a big part of the custom part of that build, because this is a bespoke exposed carbon fiber body, and this is sort of, kind of, an in-between between the road car and the GTR race car. And uh, this is quite possibly the biggest carbon fiber piece I've ever seen. It looks like it's the size of like a Prius. Yeah, pretty basically. Yeah. And what happens, unfortunately, when you have a piece this big that comes out of a carbon fiber mold is that sometimes these things get wavy. And we don't want wavy, we want perfect because this car is going to SEMA. And every car that goes to SEMA, as you know, has to be perfect. That's not true. That's, there's a lot of cars in SEMA that aren't perfect. But uh, this car, I really want to look the best because it's a very expensive car and it's a very bespoke car. So you're here to make this perfect because that's what you told me over the phone. That's what I told you over the phone, but now I'm here, so the story might change. The but, story's probably gonna change, yeah. But we're gonna do our best job. We're here with Jack and we're gonna be going through all the steps and show you how to sand it down and get it perfect. Okay, it's, perfection is in the eye of the beholder, but I think it's gonna be a lot better than what it currently is. Okay. And my eyes aren't really good anymore. So. Oh, God. now you tell me? <laughs> and this is exactly what we have going on here. You can see that this kit is really, really wavy. And Jack over here has already started to go ahead and sand it down. And he's sanded this down with 120 grit, a very aggressive grit, but a grit that's going to be needed in order to get it nice and flat. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be using a series of different blocks. You can see the different contours of this actual shell here. We're gonna be sanding it down with 120. We're gonna work it up to 320 to 400 before we pull out the inflatable booth and give it a couple or maybe even three or four coats of clear. And then we will be right back at it, sanding it down. Now Jack here, He's gonna go ahead and get started here with the sanding. Now to the naked eye, this looks pretty good on video, but as we go to sand, you can see pretty much right away all of those low spots. Now when Jack's sanding, he's using a 45 and he's working that all the way up to the actual body line itself and he's working the whole entire panel. And look at of everything that it's revealing. So what we're gonna be doing now is we are going to be completely blocking it out Wow, look at that. This was somewhat flat. What we would see is basically, it would all be kind of chalky along the whole surface and it wouldn't have all these shiny spots. So we've got our work cut out for us. So <laughs> let's go ahead and start sanding this down. After all that sanding, this is what it looks like. You can see Jack and I really, really sanded it pretty good and got everything nice and flat. You still see a few areas that are a little bit low. We don't wanna to go too aggressive with it because breaking through the carbon is not something that we want to do. This is gonna take a lot of sanding and clearing. And this is the first stage we have. 
probably about three or four sanding hours on this piece alone. You can see all of the dust that we've created and all the work that it has taken to get to this point. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna DA it with the interface pad, a soft pad, and get this thing a little bit smoother. We're gonna work it all the way up until 320, and then from there, we'll get it even closer to paint. But before we do that, we also have to work on the front end too. It's already been 120 blocked down, and from here, we're gonna follow it up with another final blocking of 180, and then move it up to 320, and Now the parts are all completely dry. We're ready for the next step, moving into the shop and getting the paint booth all set up. Well, we got our spray gun all ready to go. We're gonna be using the Segola, the 4600 Extreme. This is a digital version, and we're gonna be going with the DVR clear cap. Now we're gonna be mixing up our clear. It's a two to one mixing ratio. So let's get it mixed up and let's hit the booth. And after three wet coats, they are looking really good. The rear pan, however, is going to require a lot more work. Although it looks great on camera, it's still got some waves to the side and around the curvature. It will need a more extensive blocking. So we will be coming back to sand it all down and we have some more surprises on the way. So we went ahead and we're gonna close up shop for now and we will see you guys on the next episode of this build.